morning. And thanks Lorna, Leana and Marianne for this great opportunity. Today I'm going to talk about an ongoing research based on the medieval cemetery of Valiapot City. With this project we want to reconstruct the biological profile, the paradigm and the relationship between burial topology and style of, the, of a medieval population lived near the Via Francigena. The site of Badia Pozzeveri is located in Italy, more precisely in Tosceni, between the city of Lucca and Pisa. Luckily, we had a map of the area around the site dated at the 16th century. And here you can see the site that was settled between the Via Francigena, an old pilgrim route who linked Northern Europe with Rome, and the Sesto Lake that had been drained at, at the time of the monastery was there. Here, a quick look of the excavation, of the excavation before the, our analysis and how it is now. The site of Badia Pozzeri has a millennial history. The first, man, the first mention was at the middle of 10th century. And in 1103, the monks of the Camaldolesi order, a branch of the Benedictine order, joined the monastery. Until the first quarter of the 14th century, the monastery was a rich institution with several cultivated fields. In 1325, the Battle of Atupato was fought between the armies of Lucca and Florence, and this battle destroyed the area. The headquarters of the Florentine army was inside the monastery. In 1408, the monastery was definitely closed. We have also written records, and thanks to them, we know that the monastery of Padia Pozzeveri was a rich institution with several economic activities, such as cultivated field, milling, cattle herding, and the exploitation of water resources from the Lake of Sesto. We also know something about the diet of the monks. They had wheat, millet, wine, chestnuts, oil, fish, and meat. Here, a plan of the site, and in red, I reported all the specimens that we sampled. Thanks to stratigraphic method, we were able to recognize two different periods, one from 11th century to 12th century, and the other from 12th century to 13th century. To conduct this project, we analyzed 49 individuals from 11th century to 13th century. We also sampled fragments from ribs and long bones to reconstruct the pyrodite through time. We also analyze animal bones from, to reconstruct the isotopic baseline. To reconstruct the biological profile, each specimen has been analyzed to reconstruct sex, the age of death, the stature, the muscle development, and the pathological examination. On the site, we were able to recognize three different viral pathologies, simple, complex, and lipid coffin. As you can see here from the graph, both male and females were recovered in simple and complex variables, but only the males from the second period were recovered in lipid coffin. The average age of death tells us that the average age of death on the side was between 30 and 49 years, and the females lived longer than males. Looking at the average eye, we recognize how males were higher than females, but very interesting is that the males who lived in the first period were five centimeters taller than the males who lived in the second period. This is interesting because stature is dependent on both genetics and diet. Unfortunately, we don't have the same data for the females because their remains were too fragmented to be analyzed. From an astrological point of view, the population of Badia Pozzeveri was an active population. Although we recognize several fractures, peristitis, caries, but on top of that, we recognize four different lesions here on four different cranes. Unfortunately, we don't have many uh, evidence of care, but what we have here probably are two wounds made by this sword. So probably someone were able to treat this kind of lesion. To reconstruct the paludite, we extracted collagen following the modified Longin method according to the methodology proposed by Brown et al. in 1988. To obtain a world preserved collagen, we added an ultra filtration step preceded by a filtration step made with easy filters. I personally extracted the collagen at the, at the Monster Arbor Science Laboratory in, at the Oros University inside a six month trainship there. To reconstruct the paludite, we 
analyze both collagen from uh, humans and animals. The data that I'm going to show you soon came from well-preserved collagen according to the criteria established by Van Klinken in 1999. And to reconstruct the paradigm, we look at the stabilizer of carbon and nitrogen. With carbon and nitrogen, we can reconstruct the trophic webs of our specimens. With carbon, we are able to reconstruct the consumption of C3 or C4 plants. And with nitrogen, we are able to reconstruct the trophic level of our specimens. Here, the data of our human remains. As you can see, this population had a terrestrial based diet, although the nearness of a lake. And here we have the data from freshwater fish that at least had a minor role in their diet. If you look at the nitrogen values, we recognize how our population is one trophic step above the domesticated animals. But what is interesting is that, however, the ownership that we have has um, nitrogen values close to the human remains. Very interesting are the data from carbon, because the majority of the population have uh, carbon values above millions 18 per mil, which means a consumption of C4 plants, and or animal fed with this kind of plants. Here we have the data from a chicken, and this animal were fed with C3, C4 plants. Here are reported all the isotopic analysis from middle age sites from Tassel. And valuable savory is located right there. Now, if we make an exception for the Medici family that had a heavily diet based on animal consumption, valuable savory is the, the medieval site in Tuscany with the highest values for carbon, which means a high consumption of C4 plants. And according to the written record, probably this signal came from the consumption of millet. And here are our conclusions. With this study, which is an ongoing study, we recognize a 5 centimeter difference in the stature of the mate from the first period than the second. In future, we want to perform analysis of strontium and sulfur to detect the, the presence of non-local people. We also recognize several Krajan lesions, and now I have a question. Can we argue the presence of physicians in the area able to treat this kind of lesions? From with the uh, isotopic results, we are not able at this moment to recognize differences through time or through biological quality. But we recognize that Badiapot savory has, have, has the highest C4 values in medieval Tuscany. And interesting is that this population doesn't show a uh, water signal, although the presence of, the presence of a, a lake. I would say thank you for, to Professor Fornachari for his help and Oris University for funding and you for your attention. Thank you.